the failure of speculative philosophy from knowledge and life by rudolf uchen 1846 to 1926 published in 1913 this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org the failure of speculative philosophy if science then does not lead us to knowledge philosophy is able to vindicate itself in relation to knowledge only in so far as it proceeds on its own specific path such a path philosophy believes to have found from of old and for centuries this path has been one of speculation this speculation consists in a mode and work of ideas which free themselves from the remainder of life and which exercise complete sovereignty over all such governing ideas seemed powerful enough to penetrate to the depths of reality and to transform this reality into a possession of man as a thinking being in fact ideas have attributes which invest man with a special position and significance from the outset it cannot be questioned that if knowledge is possible at all its organ must be thought in the first place ideas are able to free man from indifference and from the interests and aims of considering himself as an isolated being they engender the conception of an actual necessity or obligation and may in their development feel themselves superior to all the disorder and confusion which surrounded them in the next place ideas include an effort to pass out of the chaos of the existing situation and to transform all the multiplicity of elements which present themselves into an inclusive system they accomplish this in a positive way by means of linking together propositions otherwise isolated they do it in a negative way by deriving contradictions out of life in the possession of such attributes ideas are able to transform the world into an inner presence speculation however passes beyond such a valuation of ideas in that it believes itself capable through its own inherent power of unlocking the world of being and guiding man to a clear knowledge of such a world but that this matter is not so simple as speculative thought assumes becomes evident from a survey of the actual history of the enterprise such a survey points to hard trials and struggles to a perpetual quest after new paths and to a constant swinging from one experiment to another it also shows an awakening of doubts ever recurring concerning the possibility of the whole undertaking two questions have been raised ever anew one can thought out of its own capacity discover an inner union with the world of reality two does thought through such a self-sovereignty exhaust the whole domain of existence in the most important work of the world the connection of thought and being has been in the foreground three possibilities present themselves here in the middle ages as well as in modern times have these characteristics appeared but they have been treated at various times in very diverse manners and the center of gravity of their various effects has been found in very different positions the first step of this speculative thought requires belief in the mutual connection of man and the world of thought and being these signify one and the same reality and belong to each other and strive together in a friendly encounter the power of such relations succeeds in passing easily from one to the other just as the light of the sun becomes visible to us because our eyes have in them something of the same nature 
so here the fundamental nature of reality is able to include our thoughts because it contains within itself elements of thought the work of thought thus only binds together qualities which belonged to one another from the very beginning the second step of speculative thought brings out a sharper distinction between human life and its environment the soul and the world are too far apart to be able to come into immediate contiguity with each other the union of the two is now sought in the fact that what occurs on the one side has corresponding effects on the other thus the supposed natural connection of thought and being here issues in a doctrine of parallelism the third step asserts that thought cannot reach being that is external to itself so that knowledge is possible only in so far as being is discovered within thought itself and in so far as it is produced by thought thus knowledge becomes a thought of thought a knowledge of self a self-comprehension of a creative thought which embraces subject and object the theory of an intimate connection of thought and being corresponds to a naive mode of thinking and it is also held in a more refined way by an ascetic mode of thinking the blossoming period of such a mode of thought was classical antiquity but the view was also revived in the middle ages and is not entirely alien to modern times it continues to be effective as a basis whenever the necessity of thought and the qualities of being are regarded as essentially connected this mode of thinking connects in the closest possible manner the microcosm with the macrocosm it discovers connections everywhere between man and the universe and by means of this development raises the life of man into breadth and greatness the strength of this mode of thinking lies in its ability to see things together its elevation is due to its ascetic intuition which does away with the interval between subject and object and consequently it gives life a strong feeling of rest and security and it seems to grant life a solid and immovable foundation this mode of thinking on its ascetic and general human sides finds its climax in plato and on its scientific side on aristotle the former held up before mankind great ideas and myths the latter by means of his teaching of the union of thought and the world developed a logical order of life and a thorough system of ideas which have governed the centuries and which exercise influence down to our own time but even in antiquity serious doubt was raised concerning such an intimate union of man and the world and with the stoics and the skeptics man and the world were parted far asunder this cleavage between man and the world became all the deeper and more powerfully the upheavals and renewals which took place later set the meaning of life in a region above its superficial connection with the environment and found the kingdom of pure inwardness in religion alone this inwardness needed only to gain a fully awakened self-consciousness and a power to control the work of science in order to reveal the ancient connection of inner and outer worlds as an intolerable defect as a projection of merely human qualities into the universe and as an unbearable anthropomorphism it was now seen that man in the turn towards the world had merely extended his own circle but had not passed beyond it it is evident that the definite contiguity and even the blending of sensuous and spiritual as these were presented from the heights of ancient thought right through the centuries as well as the conception of knowledge for example of intuition have at the present day become untenable 
more doubtful still has become the transference of formal logical conceptions into the particular nature of external things as for example the treatment of modal conceptions involving even the possibility and necessity of an energy inherent in the things themselves such an admixture of logic and metaphysics penetrates into the theory of principles of aristotle and it also finds a prominent place in scholasticism but to modern thought such conceptions appear as presenting the world in an obscure light and even in the dangerous light of ascribing human qualities to it the abolition of this confusion in the logical and the real aspects of things in the beginning of modern times has resulted in a clarification highly necessary and indeed in a mental and spiritual emancipation it thus became evident that the world without and the world within contain for man a rich fullness of life the aim was now to bring to a clear expression the abstract formal schematic character which the picture of reality took and which since the time of aristotle made the inner meaning of the effort of knowledge to consist in what lies behind the particular qualities of things for example in the nature of being itself in the recognition of being as being the necessary result of this view was that the scaffolding of abstract ontological conceptions became an essential part of reality the rich and variegated fullness of life presented by such conceptions consisted however in a mere development on the logical side of things the greater experiences and further development of life did not consequently combine sufficiently to form a connected view of reality the recognition of this fact constrained the civilized and moralized life of modern times to part with this traditional solution further the step of differentiation between thought and being already referred to is in no way alien to antiquity but the classical period of antiquity did in no manner run its whole course in this direction but though hellenic times were conscious of the antithesis of subject and the universe it is the dualistic mode of thinking in modern times that has brought such an antithesis to a climax in the modern world for the first time does man gain the power of the self-consciousness to place himself by reason of the unlimited needs of his nature over against the whole world more than ever has his life become a struggle with the universe this movement of man however has penetrated so deeply and ruled his spirit so powerfully because the cleft between himself and the world was thrust out of sight and a burning desire of his life for a unity between the human spirit and the universe as well as for the transformation of inward and outward into his own possession originated without a radical transformation of the first view of man and the world the contradiction between them cannot be overcome consequently thinkers of the first rank have devoted their best energies to this thought descartes who separated thought from the world and placed it upon itself became fully aware of the difficulty of finding his way back from thought to the world he sought to overcome the difficulty from the very outset by linking human reason to a divine reason that governed and penetrated the universe and through such a belief he gained confidence in human capacity to acquire truth he sought thus to discover for his future investigations a touchstone for the differentiation of the true and the false and believed himself to have discovered such a touchstone in concepts of entire clearness and distinction 
complex unfinished and strained as his conclusions are his contributions were of undoubted value in the fact that he laid the centre of gravity in consciousness and gave a new beginning to the movement for conceiving things from consciousness to the world and not from the world to consciousness the problem of knowledge is carried further back by spinoza and is brought by him to a height which even leibniz could hardly overtop upon this height thought and being the aspect of being as existence stand independently over against each other but both belong to the same universal life that carries and embraces them and both exist and continue parallel to each other as the appearance forms of the one reality whilst one side develops out of itself and according to its own nature still it harmonizes with the other side the order and the connection of ideas are the same as the order and the connection of things Leibniz holds to the idea of parallelism, but by it he meant not so much that thought and extension should correspond to each other as that the individual and the all, the microcosm and the macrocosm, should do so. Each individual soul, according to him, experiences the whole of infinity within itself in the form of immediacy and without any kind of mediation of the world the pre-established harmony produces this connection an intelligence that embraces the whole universe brings forth all effects the theory of parallelism contains a strong inducement to conceive each of the two sides in a precise manner on its own characteristic side and to mark clearly the boundary of one from that of the other and every mingling of the two is most strongly resisted through such a method it becomes possible to transform each of the two into a continuous union and development and to weld each in an incomparably more definite and consolidated a manner than was previously possible this investigation possesses its value on account of its penetrating analysis for the main effort of the modern world to treat nature and the life of the soul as independent provinces without at the same time giving up the unity of the universe finds here a philosophical justification thus the work of thought corresponds to the demands of the universal and the all-important situation and the frequent withdrawal of this work of thought towards the multiplicity of external things does not by any means render it alien to reality but the difficulties concerning the adjustment here sought for between the world of thought and the world of sense do not remain long out of sight most of all the main idea of an all-embracing unity fails of proof this main idea was a keen hypothesis of speculative philosophy but it is an hypothesis which the calm clearness of modern thought has sharply contradicted and one whose roots lay less in modern ground than in the world of traditional religious ideas the increasing uncertainty concerning this main idea loosened more and more the connection of man and the universe and as the weakness of this connection increased thought tended to be considered and to become a merely subjective reflection nature now sinks to a soulless mechanism and also all the possibility of a genuine knowledge disappears and further along with this uncertainty an inward impoverishment gives rise to doubt and contradiction which are actual experiences of human life despite all the external expansion and development of things for this theory of parallelism brings man into unison with the universe only in so far as everything specific and distinctive within him is discarded 
and only in so far as what constitutes a copy of the external world is alone held as essential but what remains on this theory is thus no more than thought with its forms and concatenations man consequently and necessarily becomes a mere mechanism of presentations and ideas and so it remains entirely enigmatic how he can cultivate a unity or whole and how he can experience his own life as such if life in spite of this gains a psychic depth and warmth this is supposed to happen not by means of the further development of ideas but by something in contrast with such ideas by the addition of mystic speculation and intuition it is however the main feature of the theory of parallelism that while it is able to present the equilibrium striven after by the two sides by means of general ideas it is not able to carry such ideas into effect for as soon as the theory of parallelism presents any of its conclusions we find that either the external or the internal aspect is uppermost and the conclusion expresses itself either in naturalism or in idealism mind either becomes a phenomenon which merely accompanies us a mere reflex of nature or nature becomes a mere description and semblance of mental and spiritual life the failure of both attempts of relation and parallelism necessarily leads to a further quest for a solution of the problem if the two sides do not relate themselves intimately together and if separated they do not again come together there is only one possibility of solution open namely the denial of all existence outside thought and the laying of all reality within thought and its movement if thought has to deal with its own evidence and not at all with anything alien to itself if knowledge becomes a self-comprehension of thought then no opposition can prevent the realization of a complete illumination of the problem then the work of thought seems certain of a complete conquest thought is certainly here to be raised above the mere individual and established with its own motive power it must in order to fulfill its task be raised to absolute thought in all this there is in fact a genuine effort to reach summits and turning points of life this path was not trodden for the first time by modern thought antiquity and especially plotinus and the mystics of the middle ages who followed his lead trod the same path but there lies a considerable disparity between the ancient and the modern modes of conceiving the matter the old mode of thinking placed being the constant in the foreground while the new mode gives most prominence to becoming thus the turn of the old mode towards an absolute thought signified the taking up of all the multiplicity into an unchangeable unity and interpreting the latter by means of the former as everything draws its life from such a unity which is its root everything strives to return of necessity to this unity in order to find in it its self-subsistence and eternal rest it is in this way alone that the universe gains an all-pervading unity and a pure inwardness it is here alone that an inner world originates here the unity precedes the multiplicity the inner precedes the outer and the constant precedes the mobile as here the whole of reality thus flows into the life of infinity so all definite and limited conceptions disappear and are unable to present as their interpretation anything more than a metaphor of the deepest truth complete adequate knowledge on this view is given by mystic intuition alone 
an intuition which must be clearly distinguished from the ascetic intuition of classical times for while mystic intuition extinguishes all particular elements ascetic intuition seeks the unity in and along the multiplicity alone it is especially from this point of view that the thought of an all-present unity and of a self-subsisting eternity presentia stans gained such enchanting power over many minds and gave life its penetrating inwardness as well as the way into the great and the cosmic but what is here offered as knowledge is more of a feeling difficult to grasp is more of a calm absorption of the soul in infinity than of an intellectual penetration into reality such an experience certainly discovers original depths but it does not point out a path to pass back from itself to the work of life so that it remains true that life as a whole has been furthered more on particular sides by religion and art than by philosophy but the modern turn of the main thought we have under consideration penetrates still more deeply into the meaning of knowledge it understands thought not as an intuition by the self of an eternal being but as a great becoming as a quest for one's own self and as a self-realization thus according to this view the cosmic process is nothing other than a self-realization of thought here emanation gives way to evolution and intuition to the construction of ideas hegel especially brought this leading fundamental thought to a remarkable expression in hegel's teaching the process of thought is driven further and further by means of self-engendered antithesis through thesis antithesis and synthesis the thought process evolves an ever richer content it ascends from general outlines to concrete forms the process draws all that lies near to it to itself thus the whole of existence is in flux still all the multiplicity is brought into mutual relation and interpenetration and everywhere a content of thought is discovered as the real kernel and energy of the things in existence thought thus steps out of the realm of shades it gains the most definite connection with the historical social life of mankind while the historical social life is itself seen in great connections and is universally illumined the view presented here by hegel is not directed backwards towards origins but forward towards the goal of an entire self-realization it is the view of a calm philosophical reflection embracing all movement embracing all reciprocal conflict and opposition which were placed by him in his picture of the universe we are aware how mightily that stream of life which has had its source in this hegelian movement has affected the minds of men and how much this stream has affected spiritual work as well as modern civilization and culture but we are also aware how soon a reaction took place and how many contradictions raised up their heads the conception of an absolute thought process contains before all else an inner contradiction thought can be no process and the process can be no thought thought is essentially a stepping forth out of time and an apprehension of things under the form of eternity the process on the other hand moves hurriedly forward further and further and knows neither rest nor terminus hegel in his own person and for his own day understood how to connect those two different aspects but a contradiction existed in the facts themselves and he was obliged to find justification for his theory of becoming in the special characteristics of great personalities 
and thus he had to divide mankind into opposite camps where thought stands in the foreground the process is overlooked but this is certainly a mistake unless the process has reached its final terminus thus the movement falls within the past alone and the present appears as ready-made and the future will contain nothing to do where the process stands in the foreground it moves further and further into the region of the indefinite and the uncertain the ages lose their inner bond of connection and philosophy becomes a mere expression of the existing situation a historical social view of reality thus all absolute truth may give way to a relativism we cannot any longer speak of a deliverance from and a mastery of the world in other words there is no knowledge possible the struggles and doubts which issue from such a view are bound to shake to its very foundation the position of thought and its claims to rule the world for though within the human domain a web of thought arises and a circle of existence superior to the remainder of the psychic life develops still all this remains a thought of man and that even all this is the source of reality that all this carries the universe within itself is extremely difficult to substantiate human thought is on this theory raised to absolute thought and its mode of movement is transformed into a cosmic phenomenon in far too rash and direct a manner for close at hand exists the doubt whether the whole which is thus declared as the kernel of reality is anything more than an accompanying phenomenon of reality further the nature of the world presented in this view also strengthens such doubts as thought draws into itself all reality it transforms reality into a domain of relations and forms into a world of outlines and shadows into a gloomy picture when hegel presents us with something more than this and when his world of ideas with all its distinctive clearness works upon us this effect does not arise from his theory but from his personal mode of presenting things a mode which has an open mind for all greatness and which understands how to view the multiplicity together as a richly colored picture apart from the quickening energy of great personalities everything in his theory discloses a shadowy character and a distressing emptiness of content and it is this fact which explains the occurrence of a rash turn towards empiricism and positivism and with the obscuring of man and his soul behind the problem of the physical universe and finally with the renunciation of all knowledge regarding the things of the spirit and regarding greatness thus the historical consideration of things justified the doubt whether thought be able by the mere exercise of its own force to attain to knowledge and in this way doubt presents the dilemma that in the recognition of a world existing externally thought is unable to find the path to such a world and that thought in the attempt to create all being out of itself exaggerates itself and loses itself in a world of shadows consequently the path of philosophical speculation ends in disappointment end of the failure of speculative philosophy from knowledge and life by rudolf ugen 1846 to 1926 published 1913